Facebook Live. What is up? Guys, it's Monday, number one. Number one, it's Monday. It's Monday, guys. And, and, very, very exciting, we are in a new place. We are in a new place, guys. Huge announcement. Amanda and I moved in together, just her and I, and we are so over the moon excited about it. So, I'm super excited, though, because that's not even the reason that I'm on. That's just my life, which just gets me so excited. We're doing a three-day juice uh, juice cleanse as well. But the reason... What's up, Enzo? What's up, Hassan? The reason why I'm so excited is that today I'm going to be talking with Brooke. So Brooke is an extraordinary woman, coach, mentor, all the things. She has a huge interest and excitement in neuroscience, in the way that I do. She's saying hi. What is up, Brooke? What's up, Sherry? Super excited Sherry's here. I'm talking to Sherry later today, too. So, guys, I'm going to go live with Miss Brooke today. I go way back, um, all of about two weeks. Um, so, I'm super excited. This is going to be fun, because you're going to be learning a lot about Brooke today, in the same ways that I'm going to be learning about Brooke. And there she is. Brooke, you have the coolest hair today. I love your hair. Oh, Thanks. Yeah, it's just this is cool. my hair every day. This kind is of wild. It's your everyday. It's the everyday hair. Everyday look. I love it. I love it. How are you doing How are this you? morning? Well, I'm phenomenal. First off, thank you for joining Supreme Performance TV. I love bringing people on here and talking about cool things. And today we're talking neuroscience. I do. I'm so glad you invited me. Let's let's go nerdy. Let's go straight nerdy. We know. Um, so one of our really good mutual friends, Nathaniel Solis, um, and I geek out on a regular consistent basis and Brooke and I started talking and I was like hold up Brooke is one of those hey, really one of those really cool people and Deb hello um so with all that being hey, said <laughs> with all that all being said all the all the friends good I'm so glad friends keep coming on hey David um I'm staring yeah. into the right area by the way like I'm horizontal so like can you am I staring at you right now yeah I feel pretty stared at yeah it's good okay it's really good. Okay. Word. <laughs> so, Brooke, with all that being said, you've been you've been in it for a while. You've been a um a social social I'm gonna say social worker, right? Social worker, therapist, therapist, yeah. all the things. And um, I know a lot of people that get into coaching don't necessarily always have a, uh, the academic background to back it up. Some people do their weekend coaching certificates. Some people, um, I went to school for it as well, uh, not to be a therapist, I actually went to school for life coaching. Um, but lots of people, yeah, have different ways of getting into this industry. And Brooke, I think it's so darn cool that your background is like fully steeped academically in this work. Deep. Steep. Yeah. It's deep. And uh, and now you're and now you're helping people all over the planets. So I just really want to get started in from the standpoint of people that may be seeing you today and may be like, wow, Brooke's incredible. I'm never going to get there. Let's like start from the standpoint of like, what got you excited about this work? And like, really, what is it that um, kind of got you started in really wanting to, to look more into high performance and um, all this goodness? Yeah, so actually, as you were talking, I was having this memory. Um, uh, so I used to, when I was back when I was a therapist, so I have a master's in social work, um, and I was a psychotherapist um, in rehab, so I was doing dual diagnosis work for like mm -hmm. six years. And like the very, very beginning of my journey, I was a mental health tech in a hospital on a detox unit. So I was working with like addicts and alcoholics, schizophrenics, bipolar, depression, anxiety, like all of that, um, yeah. borderline personality disorder, narcissistic disorder, all that stuff. And the first sort of like um, moment that I remember being like steeped in neuroscience, hey Natalie, um, was when we would have downtime at the hospital. Like the thing that I would do with downtime at the hospital was I would get on the computers and I would just go crazy <laughs> with like all the neuroscience bullet points. I was researching the DSM. I was printing out like, not even kidding, like pages and pages and pages of neuroscience information because I was so intrigued by it. So, so I started kind of like researching and getting really um, curious about neuroscience and like how to bridge the gap between therapy and neuroscience when I was really young, mm -hmm. um, basically because I started seeing gaps in therapy at the time. So I started noticing that like traditional or conventional therapy wasn't really like taking people necessarily into the future enough 
it was staying like either present moment oriented or like past moment oriented. Yeah. And so I wanted to find a way to know who the person was, figure out their past really fast, and then like move them into the right direction as quickly as possible. Um, and so that's sort of when everything started. I have this intuitive gift, hey Jess, um, and my intuition sort of popped in while I was in the hospitals. Um, and I was able to read patients in this really strange way. Um, and at the time, I just thought it was normal. I thought it was normal right. to be able to like, see that somebody's voices were talking or to see that somebody was having, you know, like suicidal ideation. Um, and so I'd go to the charge nurses and I'd be like, you know, so-and-so is having suicidal ideation right now. And she's like, well, how do you know? Did you record that? I was like, I, I can just tell, I can see it happening. So that was my first sort of like realization that, you know, this was something abnormal. I had some sort of a gift. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Andrea. Um, and then I moved that into my therapy. So yeah. I started using neuroscience in my therapy. I also started using mindfulness practice in my therapy. I started doing energy work on patients, um, like chair to chair, doing something called chair work um, while okay. I was working in the rehabs. That was like 15 years ago. So everything's like evolved and changed and grown since then. Yeah. And so I've taken my love for neuroscience, my background in therapy, my love for like mindfulness practice, really getting diligent about getting to know your thoughts, your emotional state, your feeling state. Hey, Chrissy, all my friends are here. Hi, hey, Shri. Oh, hi, um, friends. Yeah. And um, basically started merging all of that academic stuff yeah. with a spiritual awakening that I also had. So uh, I started studying under a shaman. I was doing healing work. I was what? really diving in deep to like spirituality, right? Okay. So I was like steeped in academia, steeped in therapeutic work, and then I became steeped in spirituality. Wow. And so that all of that kind of combined together is sort yeah. of like how I've landed as a coach today, because I can see how all of that really needs to be bridged in yeah. order to serve people at the highest level, because we all have left and right brains, right? That's a basic human component, right? We all have <laughs> Let's start there. <laughs> left, um, right. We all have bodies. We all have, you know, a heart with neurons. We all have a gut with neurons. We all have a body that's communicating with itself and with each other constantly. We all have these wonderful reticular activating systems, yes. right? Yes. That that's what I was going to bring up too. Giving us focus and giving us determination and giving us like a specific thing to create and focus on. So it's sort of like, for me, it's like a no brainer to combine all that. Yeah. In fact, like it kind of baffles me when people don't combine all of that right. because we have all these really interesting facets being a human being. So my work really when I'm a coach or doing coaching is to like understand that like we have all these different faculties. We have intuition, we have perception, we have imagination, we have logic, we have reason and like use all of that to move you forward instead of just focusing on the logic or just focusing on the intuition. So that good. Makes sense. That's so good. I hope I didn't just ramble on. For that fun. was, no, that was so damn good. I actually am going to throw you a complete curveball because this is not, and it's not, don't worry, it's not going to like throw you off. It, it's just, it's so fascinating listening to you. You are somebody that when you were talking, I was like, wow, she has so she's so multi-talented and multifaceted in your interests as well. And what I find for a lot of entrepreneurs, especially the ones that I work with, typically, the reason we call it supreme performance is because they're, ha they're like, OK, I can perform pretty well in one, but I have like hundreds of interests and like there's so many things I want to pursue. So I'm fascinated because you are somebody who's been able to not just get degrees in different things, but you've also like gone out and done it in the world and not let any of that slow you down. So I'm curious, like how you've been able to have so many interests and actually put them all into play and actually combine them. Well, and that's not, probably like a book and a half, but <laughs> there's actually a, there's actually a word that, that describes both of us. And a lot of people who are watching probably describes them too. It's called polymath, which is basically sort of like, it's the opposite of like jack of all trades. It's more like, you know, somebody who wants to master everything. Mm -hmm. So like Da Vinci was a polymath. I think like Tesla was a polymath. So we have like all these like innovators and like influencers who understood that like it, life isn't just a linear practice for me. It's way more spherical. And this is kind of like a thing for life purpose too. So like I have beef when people talk about, Hey Liz, 
I have a little bit of beef when people talk about life purpose as like a singularity. Like you have to find the one yeah. thing that you're meant for and like do that. So for me, it's like when you're multifaceted and multi multi-purposed, like I know a lot of the people, Cherie says yes, here are watching, you have to accept like all of that about yourself. And for me, it's not really even a choice. Like I didn't just sit down one day and decide like I'm going to do all the things. It's just like I have to. I, I don't actually have a choice. Like this mm. is who I am. Even in like my branding. So like I did a branding exercise with a copywriter about two months ago. She's actually my copywriter now too. Um, and we had to do this exercise like, you know, describe yourself in, in three or four adjectives. <laughs> and I was like, I feel like I'm failing at this exercise because I can't do this. And she was like, well, just, you know, try to narrow it down. And I had this aha moment where I was like, I don't want to narrow it down. Mm. Like, I can't actually narrow it down because I'm not a narrowed down kind of person. Right. So even in like my branding, I've had to, and this is good for any entrepreneurs watching. It's like when you are a polymath, when you are multifaceted, when you are multipurposed, like embrace that about yourself, like embrace the academic side, embrace the spiritual side, embrace the nerdy side, embrace the creative side. Like I'm also a dancer, like embrace your performance. Cool. Side. So you get to embrace that. like everything about you and let that sort of like leverage your momentum because I did try to like compartmentalize myself for years. Yeah. Like when I was a therapist, I was told, you know, you have to be a professional and you have to do things a certain way. So I sort of like brushed things aside that were still me, but like that didn't fit in the t into the compartment of therapist. And I did that repeatedly actually for years where I um, tried to like segment myself, like, this is my therapy period. And then like that didn't work out. So then I was like, okay, now it's my creative dance period. And that didn't quite feel right. And then I tried to like open myself up to be like super spiritual and like just being spiritual didn't feel right to me either. Yeah. Like every time I tried to compartmentalize, there was another huge part of me that was like, no, like this all needs to be expressed. Right. Yeah. So like I've come into that for myself and I found that for my clients too, most people who come to work with me like are multi multi passioned and yeah. multifaceted and like Same. part of my work that I love doing is being like you don't have to limit yourself like you don't have to choose you can have the money you can have the spirituality you can have the business you can have the family you can have the dancing you can have the travel like you can have it all really yeah so like we talk about like you know limiting beliefs and a lot of people will have limiting beliefs but they also have limiting stereotypes about like who they think they're allowed to be yeah and so i come in and say like you you don't have to have that limitation either right and right. like my life can like be an example for you that like you can embrace everything that you are so so good yeah. so good brooke so it's more fun that way life is way yeah. more fun. and to be honest like your soul this is getting kind of woo but like your soul is here Let's to evolve it. and grow and be be actualized yeah so what's the point in not actualizing? Yeah. We're only yeah, here for like years, right? Just fucking do it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, and it's kind of grave. One of my mentors, but it's, but it's a really good, um, it, she just says you're evolutionarily like we're either growing or we're dying. Like there's just, there's no like staying at a status quo. It's like you're dying if you're not growing. So um, it's really good. So I'm thinking of this now on a linear path. Like if we're to put this on time and of course time is a man-made construct, but to put this on a linear time, I find a lot of my clients that are polymaths. Um, as you're saying, I love the I word love polymath. Yeah, polymath, absolutely. Poly, 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 poly. Um, a lot of them will say that they have troubles creating um, kind of what you were saying with your brand. They'll have troubles even coming up with a name for their brand because they're like, I don't want to pigeonhole themselves. And one of the things that I'm consistently telling them is like, Let's just bookmark this time in your life with your brand and with your, the name of your company because chances are, yeah, three years, six years, 10 years, you may end up rebranding and that's great, but let's stick with something now. But I'm curious with what for you, what you would typically talk about with one of your polymath clients who's typically, you know, like I have so many interests. How do I put this into a marketing box? How do I market this sucker? I know. I would say, first of all, like, don't, <laughs> don't put yourself into a marketing box, right? Um, I would say, um, 
to really like the work that I would do with like somebody who was multi-passioned and multifaceted was to, you know, first of all, look at like, what are their areas of interest? Like, what are they actually showing up with? Yeah. Um, a lot of my work comes in um, being able to like read somebody's body cues on the phone. I know that sounds weird, but like energetically, I can read people's cues to listen to their language, to listen to their <sighs> voice. To also like, I tend Work to go in and just look at everything. Mm -hmm. So I'll go in and look at somebody's Facebook profile. I'll go in and look at their posts. I'll go in and look at their website and just things jump out at me. Right. Yep. And so a lot of the work is in saying like, is this really who you are? Is this really your voice? And to be honest, like it's hard to like capture everything about who you are into like a curated Facebook post. Right. Like I still struggle with that. So I found for me, like a solution is to use live streams because you guys can see everything. Like you can see my face, I can see your face. Like We're dancing. the gestures are here, the energy's here, right? So mm -hmm. if you're a multifaceted person, chances are you have a really awesome personality and people need to see that personality. Yeah. Because there's just some things that won't translate into copy. Yeah. Jess says this is something that she's working on right now, yeah. So there's a bunch, I know a bunch of women who are watching right now and they're all like multi-passioned. So I, I love like giving people the permission to like be everything that they are, mm. first of all, and then help them translate everything that they are into like three dimensional reality, AKA like social media website, you know, a post, because if you think about it, if you, if you're multifaceted, you're polymath, you have all these ideas and all these visions and all these plans and all these goals, right? There, there's a lot going on to try to like, zoom it down into a, a few sentences on Facebook. It's impossible, yeah. really. Like, you just can't do it. Absolutely. So a lot of the work that I'll do with people is in helping them, like, acknowledge, like, you don't have to try to capture everything in one post. Like, it's about letting people know you. It's about letting people yeah. see you. You know, like, let them see your life. Let them see you live. Let them see you speaking. Hey, Kristen. Um, and get out of that sort of, like, rut of trying to contain yourself. So Kristen's actually here. Kristen, Kristen and I knew each other from way back and she actually still has a, a picture that we drew together of like, you know, what it's like to stay in this cycle of looping over and over. Right. And what it's like to get yourself out of the loop is to sort of like find an exit or find a hatch where you can be everything. Mm -hmm. So like the picture that we drew was like this sort of like sort of grayish black hole that was sort of swirling where we all get caught in these loops right yeah. so like here's some neuroscience too like we all get caught in these loops of like you know we're about to we're about to leap we're about to transcend we're about to step in and we get scared and then we like repeat an old pattern and sabotage yeah. or we repeat an old habit and you know limit ourselves and some of the work is just in taking that initial jump to like let your world open up and be colorful and be magical and be you know, all the things that it wants to be. Love that. All the things that you want to be. So good. Well, and so now that we have this broader perspective of like, wow, yeah, I can just be everything that I want to be. We talked a little bit about vision. We talked a little bit about, um, on our phone call previous to this, about the law of attraction. So now that I have this beautiful vision of like, whoa, now how do I start to bring that into my reality from a neuroscience perspective? This is something I talk about so, in my course as well. So I'm super excited to hear your, no, I love this. your take so, on this. I love bridging neuroscience with law of attraction. And honestly, like when I first started hearing about law of attraction, I, I, I watched the secret. I think I read the secret and I remember thinking, This is going to stereotype a little bit, but I don't know how to avoid it. I couldn't really jive with the types of people who were talking about law of attraction because mm -hmm. it sounded like really airy fairy to me and I couldn't ground it. Yeah. So a lot of the work that I do is taking really esoteric things that sound like way out there and like grounding them for people so that they become practical and actionable. So you can actually like integrate them in your life. Yeah. So there's a difference between just like talking law of attraction and, and thinking all these like big, broad esoteric terms and then saying like, there's neuroscience behind this. Your body is actually designed to abide by this at all yeah. times. It's been abiding by it at all times. Yeah. And so if you can look at how your brain is actually like designed to focus on something 
and then rally the troops around creating that and around like targeting the solution, that's where the magic really happens. Yes. So for like bridging neuroscience and law of attraction, I talked about this on a live stream, I think last week where um, we have our reticular activating system, mm -hmm. right? Which I get super nerdy about. So it's basically the portion of the brain that is designed to focus on something and seek out the evidence that it exists and then to seek out evidence to prove you right. So basically, you know, we're all, always seeing life and creating life through filters. So if you have a belief that you can't do something, your brain is just going to gather the evidence to prove that right. You can't, right. Right, so you'll just start seeing evidence for you can't. But if you just change the belief or change the filter through which you're creating and seeing reality to something like, I know I can do this, I believe that I can do this, I have full faith that I, I'm capable and I need support, so I'll go create the support. And you're basically instructing, which is so fucking cool, you're basically instructing your own brain, your own subconscious, to go looking for the evidence that something is existing and that something is possible and that you can go, you know, move yourself from the point A to the goal. So good. So you have this, like, built-in mechanism. So I think a lot of people miss out on that beautiful opportunity when people don't educate them about it. Yeah. So like law of attraction isn't some weird thing you have to figure out. It's actually just built into your brain. Yes. Thank it's you, bro. It's always been there. I feel you like get, that's. Yes, yeah, Sheree. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like so that's. People can understand it. Like this isn't woo really. Yeah. It's a faculty of your brain. And if yes. you know how to leverage it correctly, then you can just create whatever you want. So good. So I have good. An exercise that I do every Monday where I basically like access my reticular activating system and tell it what to go look for. So and good. Language, this would be like, what am I manifesting this week? Right. Okay. In neuroscience language, this is what am I telling my brain to seek evidence for this week? Amazing. Can you share with us that, that how you do that? Or is that something for your course or something? Or I mean, no, it's language? something that I can go into in, in detail, like in coaching. So like the, the piece of this that would require coaching or like one-on-one -on -one work is the languaging. Right. Because a lot of times we think something and then we say it or we write it and they're not actually the same. So mm. for example, if you make a statement like, I want more money, most of us say that. I want more money. I want more money. And there's like this big romantic idea about it. Yeah. The truth is that if life presents you with one extra dollar, you've just gotten your wish. You you've gotten more money. money. Yeah. Right. So the piece that I come in and help people with is like, what exactly is it that you want? And how can we frame this as a statement mm -hmm. to specifically instruct your subconscious on exactly what to look for? To go find that. Does that make sense? So yes, like when I do this exercise on, I do it on Monday mornings, I basically just write down a list of about five or six things that I want to create or, you know, manifest. Um, and I have to, I get very specific with my languaging because I understand that if you slip up with your language, you can accidentally call in the wrong thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's how powerful your brain is, right? So I make a list of five or six things that I want to create. And then I acknowledge that your brain needs to be reminded Right. So like you can't just like make a bold statement once and then like forget about it. Mm -hmm. You have to let your brain recall the task and like recall the goal. Yeah. So I write my list. I, I make my statements. I tweak the languaging so it's very specific to what I want. And then I revisit the list twice a day. Every day, the entire week. Yes. Because, and then I track the, the process too. So uh, this is where a lot of people trip up too, is they'll say something like, I want $500 extra this week. And they say it once and they think it's enough. Yeah. And it is technically enough, but like your brain just kind of forgets unless it's reminded. It goes back especially into its old it's, patterns. Exactly. If, if it, especially if there's like a limiting belief that's like bumping up against that statement. Absolutely. Like if your conscious mind and subconscious mind aren't in cahoots with each other. Mm -hmm that's where like messes start to happen. Yeah. So if you consciously say, I would love 500 extra dollars in my bank account this week. Mm -hmm. And then immediately afterwards, your subconscious starts rolling in. Like that's yeah. not possible. How am I going to do that? That's hooey. That's bullshit. I can't do it. Like it, you're not going to win yeah. because your subconscious is rolling in with counter, counter, yes. um, counter actions, contradictions. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, and I think what's really I love about this, Brooke, is that you're putting the responsibility and the onus back in inside of ourselves and the and the mm. power, really the power back inside of ourselves, because I think the marketing that I was exposed to around the law of attraction around and around the secret was that it was like some mystical thing that was like the universe, just this big thing that's like way beyond me and that um, and that I had to like learn Take this course, you'll figure it out. Right, you have to pay me and then I'll teach you how to do this mas magical, mystical thing that you know nothing about, which is, I like what you're saying, which is actually the opposite. It's like, actually, you know all about it unconsciously because you've been using it since you were born. Like this has been something that's been in play and you've been attracting things and you've been creating, really a creating situations with your unconscious right. mind, which there's no difference between the universe and your unconscious mind, body, all the things. And this is what I teach mm -hmm. in the Supreme Performance Academy too, but I love hearing affirmation of it from other people too, that it's like, hey, yeah, there's some like things that are woo-woo that are actually like based in very grounded real science about how the brain functions and how our, how our unconscious body-mind functions. And um, Totally, and you know, cool. I think there's like the term, I love using the term like you can create by default or you can create by design. And so the trick here, like the neuroscience behind that is like, your brain and you are always creating in every moment anyway. Like mm -hmm. whether you're conscious of it or not, like you've always been creating your life forever. Yeah. So you're either going to create by the default that was given to you via mm -hmm. conditioned beliefs, conditioned programming, conditioned ideas, stereotypes, whatever. Mm -hmm. Most people, including myself, before I figured this out, were creating based on that default that we inherit. Yeah. Right. Hey, Nathaniel. So we can either like keep creating by default based on like, this is gross when you think about it. You can keep creating by default based on thoughts and beliefs that you inherited from the other people, which means you are creating your life through the filter of other people's thoughts. Mm -hmm. Like, Ooh. or right. Or you can accept that you are always creating in every moment and then decide to do it consciously. And then you get to create by design which is where you're acknowledging what your brain is capable of and you're leveraging that ability and you're going out into the world and you're creating the life and the lifestyle and the business and the money and the income and the impact like that you consciously decide upon, not that you just like default back mm -hmm. to because of a pattern. Brooke, you're extraordinary. People need to spend more time with you and find out more ways on how to do that. Thank so. You. Please, like, I would love to know how do we get a hold of you? I suppose Facebook is a pretty viable option, but are there any other cool ways or things that you're excited about where people can learn more about the beautiful Brooke K and what you're up to? Brooke K. Brooke K. Hey, hey. Um, yeah, so I have a website. <laughs> Sweet. Um, I have a website. It's brookekaylin.com. It's super simple. So, again, like, back to that branding thing, like, I started off trying to think of a name, and I was like, I can't. I can't name what I do. It's impossible. So I'll just right. went with my name. So brookehalen.com is my website. Um, people can find me on Facebook. I go live on my personal page often now. Um, yeah. That's kind of a new thing. And then yeah. I also have a, a Facebook group called Next Level Entrepreneurs, which is where I um, bridge all these things for people. Um, you can find um, information about my coaching on my website. You can also just message me if you want information about my coaching. Facebook. Um, it's really easy. I make myself really accessible. I'm not really one of those coaches that believes that I should make myself like separate and inaccessible from people. Yeah. I don't really see the point in that. Um, cool. Unless I become like Tony Robbins or something someday and, you know. Boundaries, you know. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. Um, <laughs> almost there. Um, but yeah, you can message me. You can um, find me on my website. You can email me on my website. You can also join my group. Um, yes, I will be. So as of right now, I'm it's excited. only female entrepreneurs. Darn it. Sure we're opening it up to males like today because I've had a few awesome guys message me. Okay. And I think it's just so. Can I be yeah. one of them? May I be one of you them? You can be one of them. You can be an, one of the an initial men. Yes. I was realizing there was some real potential like rejection, like public rejection there on the line. You could have been like, oh, no. well, I don't know. I mean, you seem like a nice guy, but I'm not sure. Brooke, thank you so much. This is awesome. And I, I feel like there's like many more of these to come. At least totally. like one more, but probably many more because I think we just scratched the surface. So I want to do so much more of this. Cool.
Brooke? I'm so glad. I would love to. I would love to do more with you. And I will, um, just for my peeps who are watching too, like we're going to yeah. do a switcheroo here too. And switcheroo. I'll be um, interviewing Matthew too soon because what he does is incredible too, you guys. Like he, Aww. do you want to say something about, you do, you bridge neuroscience and movement in your coaching. Yes, I do. Stuff. Yeah, it's really, really, frankly, very similar stuff. I help high achieving entrepreneurs master boundaries, confidence, taking back their energy, like their physical vitality and energy, and taking yeah. back their power in their lives. I mean, in a lot of the same ways that you do. So it's really cool stuff. I love that we get to talk about this. And yeah, I look at it through the vehicle of the body. Um, so totally. it's cool stuff. I'm excited. I'm so glad we did that. Great. Yeah. And thank you guys, everybody, for watching too. Yeah. Thanks so much, friends. Brooke, you have an amazing day. Everyone else, have an amazing day. We'll talk to you all soon. Thanks so much. Bye. <laughs> Thank Bye. you.